you could call my presence here a personal vendetta. I do it to call women into the world of possibilities. You could actually call my work a blood feud against smallness. An invitation for women to rise. Whatever faith they practice, whatever country they reside in, I have an obsession with women being paid for their brilliance, their softness, their calling, their dreams. I'm an advocate of true creative control over your one gorgeous life in this body. You getting paid every hour of the day for your thoughts, your habits, your solutions, the heartbeat in your chest, and the brilliant mind between your two ears. If you know it in your soul that you're meant for this way of living, I invite you to understand the game. Woo! Hi! Okay, day two. Sinking in. Getting in. Ready for it. I hope you're ready for it. This is part two of the game. We're a little bit earlier in the day than normal for me, but... We're also having a good old fashioned Friday in the XMH uh, brand, which means later on today, I've got a live video to welcome the newest members of Frequency of Beauty and kick off a fresh round of Frequency of Beauty inside of my beauty space. I've also got a meeting of the Secret Sisterhood. We're in the final few get togethers of that space. It's going to be a good one or, uh, later this afternoon. So my weekend and my afternoon, they're already kind of plotted out. And so we're together a little bit earlier, but I'm just here for it all. So regardless of whether you're catching this live, if you're live here right now, tell me hi, tell me where you're watching from. Do you have a beverage? Where are you? What are you doing? Give me, give me the situation. Okay. If you end up watching this on replay, just hashtag the word replay so that I know who my replay people are. Trust me, I still appreciate it. I appreciate it when I see, you know, at nighttime when I'm chilling with my kids or like, you know, I open my notifications and I can see that like hours later, people are checking out the content and something is hitting and something is landing. It's just as important to me. So if you end up doing the replay, let me know. And actually, I don't know if my comments are working. Uh, uh, Jesse, if you're live, will you tell Rebecca to bring me the other phone so that I can watch comments too? Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, yesterday. So a little recap, just in case anyone's joining that didn't catch me yesterday. Day one was a whole vibe. Like my highest level mastermind, the ladies were saying, oh my gosh, you are on fire. It was hitting, it was landing, that was made for me. There's times when... You know, my clients are saying there's times when I watch your stuff and I'm like, yep, I should be taking notes. And then there's other times where it's just like, oh, you got me, girl. <laughs> and yesterday was apparently one of those days for my highest end client. So that was really, really cool to hear. I gave you guys an assignment and I prefer the word activation over the word assignment. I wasn't that great in school. I'm not a big school person. So I prefer the word activation for day one. I asked you to write a list of rumors about yourself because I wanted to recode the feeling underneath gossip and rumors for you. And I wanted gossip and rumors to hold a different energetic frequency for you from here moving forward so that whenever you hear the word, oh, rumors or gossip or, um, you know, stories or whatever, Whenever you hear that in the future, you're going to go back in your head to this list that you made about yourself. I heard you were going to Paris on a trip. I heard you just got a helicopter. I heard you fill in the blank. Give me some of those I heard you and tell me, tell me what landed for you. I heard you got the house on the island. I heard, like, tell me all the things. Just start to list them out in the comment section. Tell me who the heck you are. If it all worked out, 
if your wildest dreams came true, what would the people who are watching you be saying? I want to give you power today. Hmm. I want to give you power. A few years ago, someone came into my inbox on social media and they said, I had a dream that you came back to our hometown and you were wearing a purple outfit, a purple jumpsuit, and you were so rich. You were just so rich. So I want to stack on top of what you have there. Okay. I want to stack on top and I want to add my rumor on top of your rumor. I'm just going to make up a story about you. Every one of you that's watching live, I want you to take this to your heart. I heard you came back to our hometown. I heard you came back. And you had the impact you always wanted. Everyone is talking about you and what you're doing. Everyone is is so blown away by what you've done. People don't even know what to say. We're all just so blown away. When you're not here, we're all talking about it. We just can't believe that you came from here. And this is what you've done. And now we're all so inspired and we want to do it too. You made us brave. You made us bold. You made us want to ask for more. You showed us what's possible. Thank you. I know that wasn't easy. Put that just in your heart. Feel it. Because no matter what was on your list, if someone said that to you, you'd know that it was done. So stack my rumor on top of your rumors and just let it land. What if everything that you wrote down happens? What if 50% of it happens? What if three of them happen? You've heard this, this uh, postulation that desire indicates design. Have you heard this before? The sacred things, ooh, it's 111 Eastern. The sacred things that you wrote down, the rumors that you started about yourself, they are indicators for what you came here to do. There's this concept in uh, some, a lot of different places, Jewish mysticism, um, some people in the spiritual world call it sacred contracts. There's, there's a lot of different branding for it. And I'm going to talk about personal brands today. So let's just say this. I'm very open to working with people of all different faiths because what I sense is that a lot of us are talking about the same things, but we just have different words and energies in which we describe them. So our spirituality is branded differently. Right? So I talk about things that, that people of many, many different faith, traditions of faith can resonate with. And one of the things that I first learned about in Jewish mysticism within like a Christian circle, but now I found it in many different circles, is this idea of um, like sacred contracts. That before time, before you get your skin suit, this beautiful body that you get to walk around and be in and cherish and love and take care of and honor and respect, 
before you get your body, a lot of different traditions of faith believe that there's a contract of sorts. So scripturally, people say like when you were in your womb, like God knew you. Many other traditions of faith, including Jewish mysticism, believe that there is an actual written contract about your life. And if this makes your hair stand up a little bit, and if it makes you feel something, like maybe this resonates for you. But many different beliefs postulate that before you're born, there's an assignment and there's a purpose and there's something that you are supposed to come here and do. And that's you become born <laughs> and you get some form of like human amnesia and you forget. But throughout your life, it's like you get breadcrumbs. You get breadcrumbs, you get tears in your eyes, you get goosebumps, you get deja vu, you get weird spidey sense tinglings of like, ooh, I feel like I've met you before, or like, why is this so comfortable? I feel like I've known you for a long time. Why is this so easy? There's just an ease here. There's something here. And other times it's large red flags and all of your program programming that you get in the human realm is like, just ignore your feelings. And you're like, no, 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 no. I got a, I got a bad feeling. And you find out later that you knew the truth. The truth was within you. Your instincts were standing up for you. There's a legend within that knows your story and your feelings, your emotions, your instincts, the hairs standing up on your skin, the tingle up your spine, the gut feeling that you get, the things that you're naturally drawn to and naturally repelled by, they're all indicators of this design, this pathway, this destiny that you have come here to do. I think it's very interesting that on day one, we were talking about the fact that like our mothers and our grandmothers were not born necessarily in a time where they had the freedom to express the way that we have. We can literally sit on our beds, open up our phones and have access to people all around the world, make a global impact in millions of dollars just by showing up and speaking our truth. Our grandmothers didn't have this. We're also navigating a terrain that is so unfamiliar. So much has happened in terms of technological advancement in the last hundred years that we're literally living in like a foreign territory and it's a lot. Like, please raise your hands in the comments section if like sometimes it just feels like a lot. Spiritually, emotionally, it's a lot of stimulus. <laughs> it's a million decisions to make a day. Like our brains are literally working so fast now. And those of us who are, you know, remember what it was like with no cell phones. We can remember a time when like your brain was just like, ah, you just lay outside and stare at the sky. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like uninterrupted, like time, things have, have, have just accelerated so fast in the last 30 years. But I have this feeling that you knew that that was gonna happen. I have a deep conviction, a deep certainty that you picked this. The world of personal branding, the world of social media influence, I think it's a much bigger movement on the spiritual plane than what we think about. Because I knew when I created this masterclass that it was gonna be something very different. And I do teach strategy. I do teach copywriting and how to do product uh, demonstrations and teach a masterclass. And clearly there's 1200 people in this group so I know how to build an audience. And you know, we're like, Literally, <laughs> like no shit, we're like $400 away from making 200K this month. So probably the next person that buys something is going to send me over 200K. Like literally, 
I know some things, obviously, but I felt this depth inside of this masterclass talking about what a personal brand really is, the, the what, the why, the how, the what it takes, and that this was going to be a spiritual and energetic conversation. Every time that I went to go like, yeah, I mean, I could teach them this and I could teach them this and I could teach them this, like God's source spirit was like, no, <laughs> no, not that, no, just trust, just go push live and start talking and we've got it. So I'm going to talk about some unconventional things today. And if that's okay with you, you can, you can write the word unconventional in the comments section. And please comment a ton because my comments aren't working. And I know that you're there, <laughs> but I would like them to kick in. And the more that you comment, the faster they'll kick in. It'll be great for me because <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a responder. I'm an emotional authority, a 5-1 Manny Jen, and I'm a responder. And I'm responding to your energy right now, even if I can't see the comments, damn it. Okay, so I have this feeling. I have this knowing. I have this just... The way that I live is that I sense you all knew that you were being born into and you chose to come into a time when you would be part of a global movement on the spiritual plane. A lot of old things are passing away. A lot of old notions about what's possible are passing away. A lot of previous paradigms are being replaced. They don't even have to pass away for them to be replaced. It's just people are shifting. The consciousness is shifting. Women are rising, which is amazing. We are taking up and deciding to say yes to the places where like, oh, maybe our grandmother didn't have this chance, but we do. And we say yes. And we're realizing that everything that was on that paper from yesterday or in the notes section on your phone or in your journal or your diary, it can all come true. That's the time that we're born into. But with that comes a tremendous pressure. With that comes choice. We are in the peak of women's choice. And I know that word is loaded. But I want to take it I want to take it to the light. I want to take it to a high frequency. You have the choice to step into everything you wrote yesterday. There is literally nothing in your way but what you put in your way. We are born and living in a time when you can get paid all day long, every hour of the day, by people all over the world for just being you and being more of who you are. Letting your frequency rise and your energy get bigger and bigger and bigger and expand out and out and out and out and bigger and greater and higher. Getting paid for your impact. Getting paid to be more of who you are. That's the time we live in. And as I said yesterday, you get to choose not to. That's 100% your choice. That is called F-R-E-E -E will. Free will, baby. You get to choose to do the guaranteed thing. One of my mentors very much like in the last week has been talking about the fact that we are part of a time where it could go one of two ways. One, you can work a job where you are guaranteed that if you work 40 hours a week, you will get, you will get paid 
$40,000 a year. Energy in, cash out. Energy in, cash out. It's a guarantee. You know that if you show up and you clock in for this number of hours, you will certainly get paid $40,000-ish. Some more, some less, depending. And you also are alive in a time when you could step out, take a risk, shoot your shot, align your faith, take the actions, and you could put that same 40 hours towards building a personal brand. And here's the fucked up part. It's completely possible. Oh my God, we just crossed you $100,000 for the month. Oh. <laughs> it just happened. Holy shit. <laughs> It's, it's totally possible that that could happen for you. I just got the notification across the top of my phone. Oh my God, it just happened. Raven Cox, you sent us over. <laughs> it's totally possible that could happen. Like this result is not exclusive to me. Like this is not just something that I can do. A bunch of my friends do this too. Like, it's totally possible that you could take that same 40 hours that you're going to give to someone else for a guaranteed amount of salary and a guaranteed benefits package and a guaranteed retirement, and you could say, no, thank you. I, I take back my 40 hours, and you could go stick it somewhere else. And the fucked up thing is, you could have what just happened to me, and you could be like, holy shit, we made $200,000 this month. Or you could get nothing. It's very possible that you don't get paid anything. That's fucked up, huh? It's very weird. Isn't that weird? There's a chance you could make nothing. Or there's a chance you could exceed your wildest dreams. If you would have told me when I was working as a hairstylist and standing behind people, blow drying their hair and putting eyelashes on them and contouring their faces and scrubbing their pedicures, if you would have told me literally a decade ago, because that's what I was doing a decade ago. If you would have told me a decade ago, there will be a time when you will be sitting on a bed or you have made $2 million by sitting down, opening a phone and talking with people around the world. And you will be celebrating that you made $200,000 in sales in one month. Not in a year, in one month. I would have probably fallen over and been like, can we just press fast forward? Like, can you take me there? Please, can you take me there? Can I go there? <laughs> Cause like, you know, it's really wonderful serving the masses and like, you know, being energetic management for these celebrities who are going on camera and like blow drying hairs. And like, I had the coolest clients, like no shit. I had the coolest clients in, on the planet. I have done haircuts and beard trims and makeups and you know, styled photo shoots for billionaires and gosh, like just, just people that I scroll social media and I'm just like, I can't believe I, I was part of that person's world. You know what I'm saying? Like I scroll social media and like my clients are like A-listers and now I scroll and I go like, I used to like do their makeup. Like how weird. But even back then, if you had told me, one day, not too far from now, you will look just about the same as you do right now. Your hair will be different, but you will have had two kids and you will be sitting on a bed where you made $2 million and you will get a notification that comes across the screen of your phone and you will realize that you have made $200,000 in sales that month. This will happen to you. I would be like, I will trade careers <laughs> immediately. <laughs> like, how do I do it? What do I do? This is the power of a personal brand. 
And I will also tell you, I took a massive risk on the way because the risk is this could happen or you could possibly not make anything. I will also tell you for my first My first five years in business, I didn't have a private mentor and I didn't make money. I took the big make a personal brand risk. I felt the pain of watching people do my craft at a subpar level and it made me mad enough to do something about it. Watching people do makeup tutorials on YouTube that you can't even follow and teaching weird things and going viral and I was just like, I'm way better than that. Let me get my ass out there and try, okay? For the first five years, I built my brand up to being multi six figures, but it wasn't profitable. I was putting out as much as I was getting in. I took the big risk. I felt the pain of working 40, 50, 60 hours and not getting the pay. I felt that. I know what that feels like. And there's a couple of things that I want to say about that because there are people watching this live that are like, how do you know which one you will be? <laughs> I want to try this. Like you're enticing me. I want to have a $200,000 a month. I want to know what that feels like. I know I'm made for it. And also like, how do I know which one I'm going to be? How do I become the one that's 200K a month and not the one that's like, yes, I worked my 40 hours and I got jack shit. <laughs> How do I know which one I am? Okay. I feel like that has to be the conversation today. Because we've still got another day. We've got all of today. This is only day two. Day one is still available for you to go back and replay. Ooh, if Jesse's watching live, Jesse, can you message um, Rebecca and have her bring me the office line? Because I can't see comments. That would be of IB. Um, yeah, we've got yesterday, we're halfway through today, and we still have tomorrow where I'm, I'm, I wanna talk about some strategy. But today I wanna talk about the energetics, the energetics piece, the energetic side of this. So there's one really practical piece that I wanna point out, and that is my first five years in business when I wasn't profitable, like I can look at the chart from here. I made $26,000 my first year, 52 my second year, 141 my third year in business, 313 my fourth year in business it looks like 400 yeah maybe is it 411 the next year and then it's like half a million half a million ish right thank you so much so like it it climbed but it we only became really profitable since 2019 i spent a lot of time just figuring things out and here's the thing about mentorship, and I want to echo something. Ooh, I just got the like, the willies. What is that? What is that? Okay, that was weird. It's like one of those moments, right? Oof, so weird. What is that? I'm having a moment. I don't know what that was. I feel like I just walked through a portal. Okay, here we go. I have to close my eyes for a second because it's really strong. So I want to echo something that one of my friends said over this past weekend, and that is, and this is going to run totally contrary to the entire coaching industry, which pays me. But here you go. I don't think you have to have a mentor to be successful. Isn't that a weird thing for me to say? I am a coach. I am a mentor. I am a consultant. I'm a magical mixture of celebrity stylist meets marketing expert meets expert copywriter meets intellectual property harvester. I help people figure out what, what their IP is. I course launcher, emotional support, <laughs> natural mom. <laughs> Like, I'm all these different pieces, right? And I sell my brain. I sell my energetics. That's what I do for a living. I sell my support. I sell my guidance. 
I sell my I'll have your back, baby. And also, I don't think you have to have a mentor to be successful. But what you lack in mentorship, you make up with in time and mistakes. For my first five years in business, I did not have a one-to-one -one mentor. I didn't have someone that I could ask questions to. I didn't have someone I could bounce ideas off. No one had a bird's eye view of my brand. I had no one looking at my numbers. I had no one asking me reflective questions. I had none of that shit. I went to business conferences every six to eight weeks. I went all around the world and I had a person who was speaking to a room of a thousand people and I took it upon myself to dissect what was being said to a, from a stage to a thousand people and tried to figure out which pieces were actually for me or not. And then I went home and I did a lot of experimentation. I'm very much self-taught in a lot of spaces. Self-taught on a lot that I learned for social media, copywriting, presentation, branding. A lot of my stuff is self-taught. but at the cost of five years of not getting paid. Five years of growing my personal power. Five years of, oh shit, I didn't think of that. Fuck. Now what do we do? Five years. So, no, I don't think you have to be in a mastermind. I don't think you have to have a mentor to ultimately be successful. But this is where that word in the industry, collapsing time, came from. If you're live and you have a pulse and you're watching, just write the word collapsing time in the comment section. That would help me out. And I'm going to check and see how many comments we actually have in real life since, uh, you know, I can't see them. <laughs> yeah. So collapsing time is the concept of choosing to work with a mentor who knows the secret sauce to where you want to go. So all that stuff that you wrote on your paper yesterday, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? There's somebody out there who's already done it. There's someone who mind, body, soul, and spirit is already living the life that you want to live. They're the total package. They've got it. And the idea and the concept of mentorship is finding the person that resonates with you, that feels like a fuck yes for you, and spending time with them and letting it be a mutual relationship. So this is the interesting thing about mentorship and the difference between like group programs and actually having a mentor is that in a group program, it's a one-sided relationship. So f say for example, I have a couple different mentors that I watch a lot of their stuff and the relationship is one-sided because I am receiving but there's a wall against how much I can give back. There's a wall up energetically because I'm in a group of many people and I'm receiving, I'm receiving feedback in a group program. There's a wall up to me actually responding in real time and saying like, Hey, like I heard you say this, but what about this particular um, instance? Does what you said still apply? Or if I'm a mom and I have a new baby, does what you said still apply? Or if I'm in a relationship and my partner and I are having problems and there's and the money is funny, does what you said still apply? Or I'm not the one executing the stuff that you're teaching me here, my team is. If I have a team and I'm not doing it all, does what you said still apply? See, but I can't ask that because there's a wall. It's a one-sided relationship. Just as, as you guys are live right here, right now, for perfect example, my comments don't work. So right now, I'm giving and you are in receivership. 
And there are moments where I bet there's some of you who are like visceral learners, like I'm a visceral learner and you're listening to this and you're like, yes, girl. And there's some of you who saw me celebrate and go like, oh my God, we just crossed 200K for the month. And some of you were like, you bitch. And some of you were like, yes, I knew it. If you can do it, I can do it. And there's some of you who are like, yes, I'm next. I'm next, right? And you would like to be able to say that to me in real time, but there's a wall. I can't see your comments. The difference, the difference here is with mentorship, you have a back and forth dialogue with the person. Oh my God, Kiara's here. Hi, mamas. Oh my God, Kiara. That's whose conference I was at this last weekend. <gasps> Hi. So this is the difference. It's like you can try for five years like I did and you can, you can learn a lot. You can experiment like a mad woman. You can experiment like crazy. You can try and fail. You can try and watch and dissect what people are doing and try to replicate what they've done. Or, or you can do that thing in the industry called collapsing time and be like, you know what? I think I'd rather just fucking ask somebody who's already doing it. Like, will you pull the curtain back and show me what's happening behind there, Oz? <laughs> right? Show me what's really happening back there. Let me see your humanity. Let me see your struggles. Let me see your pain. Let me see your triumph. Let me see what it really fucking takes. That's mentorship. So I went on a tangent to say yeah, I didn't have a mentor my first five years in business and I also didn't have a $200,000 a month. Now I have many mentors. <laughs> I'm now at like 26 and counting. Many close proximity mentors that I would see a sample of like something that I wanted and I go like, how the fuck did they do that? Teach me your ways. I've had mentors on energetics and and relationships because my relationship with my spouse, my partner has been probably one of the biggest growth edges of my entire adult life. I've had mentors on money. I've had mentors on motherhood. I've had mentors on holistic practices and birthing. I've had mentors, you know, I learned to do makeup in Hollywood, you know, so I've had mentors in, you know, the image industry, all of it. But over 26 mentors in this industry in the last couple of years. It racks up. It matters. It allows me to get where I want to go faster. It shows me what's possible. But all that, I'm just going to put a pin in it and set it to the side. Because what I want to bring you back to is there's people here that before before the sands of time flipped and you got a skin suit and you came into this earth and into this body, there was some type of a sacred contract. Like I believe with all my heart and this might not resonate. And for some of you, you have full body chills. When I say this, I can picture that you're the soul of you, the essence of you signed in agreement before you were born of like, yes, I will come to earth. I will live through the nineties. <laughs> I will live through the Twin Towers. I will live through the advent of the iPhone. I will become part of a, a international, multi, like worldwide movement of the world fucking awakening. I will be a part of the old paradigms being replaced. And I will be presented with an opportunity to sit on a bed, open my phone, open my throat chakra, if you believe in that, I do speak my truth, make an impact, and get paid for it. I think before you were ever born, you knew that this was going to come up. And I think that that weird energy thing that just happened for me, it's like that happens for me sometimes. A few times a year, I have, I'll have this feeling in my body where like the room spins and my body feels like I'm spinning in a different direction. And it just happened while I was here on camera with you. It doesn't happen a lot for me, but it's like I know something big is about to happen. So I believe that before you ever got here, 
you knew this day was coming. You knew that a girl with a purple background was going to speak to your freaking soul and be like, hey, you picked this. You picked that you would be part of the social media game. That you would be surrounded by people who activate your faith. That you would be mildly triggered, but mostly activated into faith and trust in yourself. And that you would want what they had. And something in you would be bold enough to write down on a piece of paper rumors projected into the future of what you will become. And the legend within would rise and be like, yeah, let's go make that happen. What's next? I think you knew this was going to happen. I think you knew it was coming. I think beyond pressing play on this video, I think you knew it before time. And yes, you have free will to do nothing with it. You have free will that that paper that you wrote yesterday, like, never comes to be. You have that option. But how interesting would it be if it all came true because you picked yes? Now there's some stuff in the way. Yesterday, I, after, you know, we had our training together and our time together, I went for a walk with our nanny, who's a freaking vibe. I love her and my kids, which was a super vibe. Okay. And as we were talking, we were kind of discussing, yeah, there's 206 comments. I can finally see them. That's cute. <laughs> I'm shooketh. I fucking love you guys. Okay. <laughs> uh, now I can see him. I can see him on this phone. That's adorable. Okay. So I'm out on a walk with um, our nanny and I was kind of recounting the weekend. So I went to this thing in Austin, Texas. My friend Kiara put on a badass live event um, called Wild Alive. And to be completely transparent, I had wished so much that I had pursued speaking on her stage. She gave us the opportunity back when we were peers in a mastermind early this year. She's like, yo, I'm putting on a live event. Like I'm looking for speakers. And I like wrote in the chat, like, yes, I want to do it. And then here's the fucked up thing. Okay. Here's where, here's where you get free will to go after what you want or not. Okay. I knew I wanted to speak on her stage and I said, yes, it's me. Do you know when you're in a mastermind with 26 other people, it's really easy to miss a message. So I was like, oh yeah, she for certain knows that I would like to speak on her stage. I said it. Yeah, she for certain knows. And then time went by and time went by and I had my own live event earlier this month, which was like a seven day experience and then like coming home and landing it all. And I was like, no, like I, st I would still love to be part of that. And so I reached out to Kiara and I'm like, yo, like, when is your, what are the dates? What's the vibe? Which it would have, okay, here's where sabotage comes in. Okay, can I be transparent? Here's where sabotage comes in. The girl has been posting about her life event in Austin, Texas for a hot minute. And I could have fucking found the link a long time ago. I also could have fucking messaged her about 42 times and been like, yo, do you have your speakers for your stage? Because I'd love to. Did I do any of that? No. <laughs> If you're alive and you have a pulse, say aligned action, aligned action, aligned action. Okay. So I took zero fucking aligned actions and I was just like, well, she knows I wanted it. Cause I said yes in the chat. In hindsight, when I play that back, when I like, <laughs> you know, like the old VCR tapes, <laughs> like play that back. No, she, she clearly probably missed that message in a sea of like hundreds of messages that came in on the daily. Okay. So 
I reach out and I was like, hey, can I get that link? And then I go on her profile and I was like, duh, it's already been posted. So it's like, mm, unsend message, unsend message. And I look and I can see that my friend has already chosen her speakers because guess what? They're probably fucking proactive. Okay, watch me. Desire indicates design. When Kiara was like, hey, I'm looking for speakers. I was like, fuck yeah. I'll come and speak on like the, the frequency of beauty. Like that would be so fucking fun. And I'm so different from everyone else on the stage. There will be no competition. I'm totally in the creative plane. Like this is my jam. It'll be so fun. Okay. Similarly, you are watching my life. You are watching me celebrate a $200,000 sales month. And a part of you is like, yes. Sign me up. I want to do that. I want that. Hook me up. And also, like, you put it out there into the universe, but then also, like, are you going to fucking do anything? Like, next move matters. <laughs> the next move matters. Okay, so I did nothing. I did nothing. I did no follow-up until the month of her live event. And then I was like, hey, when is it? Went in helped myself to go find the link. Oh, okay. I find the link. I also noticed she has all of her speakers for the live event. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> like awesome. Totally missed your opportunity. Cute. Good job. And then I was like, you know what? I always had meant to go to this. I had always wanted to support her. I'm still going. So I'm like, okay, what, what next aligned action can I take towards being a part of this energetic movement? Somebody, if you are alive, we're going to have some church in here. I want you to high five your neighbor energetically out there watching side by side with you and be like, what next aligned action? Okay. Cause that was the question. So I reach out to her and I was like, I'm coming. My husband's going to watch the kids. I'm coming to your conference. I wanted to go be there for my friend, cheer her on from stage. I have a gift of energetic management for a room. I was like, fuck yes, I'll be there. I will be on the side of her stage cheering for her. And also I will put my stuff in her swag bag. A thousand percent. I will. Here we go. So I go to her live event and day one of her live event, these questions came up. The day one questions in here of like, yeah, energetic projection, write your own rumors. And I was there going all out doing the work. And when I wrote my own rumors, things came up like Oprah is your mentor. You have a worldwide platform helping other women rise. I heard you and your daughters are best friends and you're inseparable. I heard you got the house on the island. I heard you got the spot in the book. I heard, you know, and it was outlandish stuff that like it would break my heart for it to not happen. Like... I want you to, I want you to tune into things that like, if they didn't happen, it's hard for you to think about. Like it borderline hurts to think about because you're like, if this doesn't happen for me, like it would actually hurt. Like I, if I die and this doesn't happen, I will feel like I didn't complete something. This is indicative of your destiny. This is indicative of the icon within. This is indicative of your energetic signature on the earth plane and the spiritual plane. If the things that you wrote down, the rumors that you wrote about yourself, if you died and not a nan, one of them happened and you feel like that would be a tragedy and you would die incomplete, that's a sign. So I go to this events and I'm writing out all my things of like, this kind of hurts to think about because it hurts to think about it not happening. And if I admit that I want it, then I have to do something about it. This is why a lot of women don't touch desire. 
because if you admit that you want it now there is there is a calling to do something about it to be more if you say you want more there's a calling to be more But I was like, I'm all in. We're doing it. I'm writing down all of my little special fantasies. All my rumors that if they came true, I would know that I had a life well lived. And that I came here and I fulfilled my assignment. My calling. My design. Which is indicated by these desires. Is this landing for you guys? Is it landing? Okay. Miracles happen when you actually open up your heart and do this deep work. So I wrote it all out and I was like, that's hard to look at, but it's also really fucking exciting to think about like, what if, like the crazy, what if, and I also did some really interesting body work in the afternoon and evening. Like that's all I can say about it, but it was with, with the help of some of my peers, I did some interesting body work. That's all I can say. And I set the intention that I was going to have the fucking time of my life discovering my own path to bigger than Oprah. There was this moment, and my mom's a, a true clairvoyant. Um, my mom attended my live retreat earlier this month in uh, Georgia. So my mom was down here. And my mom gets like, not audible, but like... Um, like some people call it spiritual downloads. Some people call it word of knowledge. Some people call it mental telepathy. Like some people call it like messages from the quantum field. Like there's so many different, different ways to brand what is happening in her body. Like brand it, right? Everyone has to have a fucking label. But like my mom, she's a clairvoyant and she's had like words about me since I was born. Like since like she saw me, like since I was born, she looked at my feet and she was like, oh, this is an artist who will travel the world. And I have traveled the world in the name of my art when I was a makeup artist. I've already done it. And now when she came to our live event and she was watching me get mic'd up, she said that she had an internal knowing that she, she heard bigger than Oprah. And she told me and I was like, that would be so cool. <laughs> Cause I love me some Oprah, her impact, her generosity, like, like the feeling that, that she gave people being in their homes around the world at 4 PM Eastern every day, like, like the awareness that she brought to the country about many different topics that really pushed the needle on consciousness. Like, I love her. And I know she does weird things behind the scenes. Like she's like, she's like, Deepak Oprah or Deep, Deepak Chopra. I said Deepak Oprah fied. She's Deepak Chopra vibes. She's like, you know, all the woo things and you can feel it. Maybe she doesn't like broadcast it to the world, but you can feel it. She's very conscious. She's very amazing. And when my mom said that, I thought if I, if I had half her impact, that would be incredible. And it hasn't left me that I actually desire that. I desire it. And that's what I wrote in my paper. Like, what if Oprah mentors you? What if Warner Brothers breaks all their rules? Because I've had someone else give me this crazy prophetic word um, about me being on Shark Tank, like the next Lori Grenier. And I started writing things like, like Lori Grenier reached out because she wants to give up her seat on Shark Tank. So she's mentoring you for six months, I heard. These are my big, bold dreams. And I wrote down things that are big enough that I have to make moves. They don't happen with easy yeses anymore. I get a lot of things on easy yeses, but it's the ones that it would actually hurt to hear no that are moving the needle towards my destiny. So I set an intention on the first day with Kiara at Wall of the Live. I set an intention to have the time of my fucking life discovering my personal path to bigger than Oprah. Is there anyone here 
who would be so brave as to set the intention today that you're going to have the time of your fucking life discovering your path to what you wrote on that paper? Is anyone that brave today? Is anyone available to take that risk today? Is there anyone who's available for the Melanie on layerism, which is like, it might be really easy or I might have to prove it, but either way I'm in. Is there anyone like literally write it down if you will. Like I want you to write the words, I set the intention to have the time of my life discovering my path to and then something that was on your paper. So I put that out in the universe on the first day. I was like, okay, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I'm in. I say yes. Let's go. Okay. So it was so cool. The very next day, um, I woke up in the morning, went down for day two of conference, and it was amazing. Just an amazing affirmation how fast an opportunity can come up to say yes to destiny, to your design, to your desires, right? So the main speaker and the founder of this event walks up to me and I was, I was dedicated to being her biggest cheerleader, to being her advocate in the room, to being energetic management for her. So when she walked up to me, it was big smile. Good morning, BB. How are you? You know, just giving her all the love. Cause that's what I did as a celebrity makeup artist. It's like I was behind the scenes right before people gave the biggest talks of their careers, the make it or break it, come back or be put away type of presentations for huge names. So for context, I used to do like one of the biggest retreat events of the year for a company called WME IMG. And you'll see their names if you pay attention. You start looking for like IMG or WME. They're one of the biggest talent houses in the United States. And they house a lot of big names. Like Snoop and Pharrell and Adele and many different intellectual minds of our time. Why can't I think of his name? But like the guy who does um, Tesla right now. Why can't I think of his name? Like so many huge names. The biggest authors that you can think of, Brene Brown, I've done her hair and makeup. It's like, like big names. And I was the energetic management in the green room. Doing their hair, their makeup, their touch-ups, their last looks. That's the crazy thing about being a high-level makeup artist is like, it, it's not about your skill. It's about, it's about you and your energy. There's a million people who can put makeup on a face, like a bazillion, kajillion, millions of people that know how to do a makeup, but there's a select number of people that can be trusted in a room and actually go behind the scenes and be the person that touches a celebrity and like puts them at ease and like is the one before they go on stage to give the biggest talk of their life. That was my job. It was so far beyond hair and makeup. It was energetic management. And I was trained on how to do that in Hollywood. I was trained. You have a personal fucking responsibility to walk in there with good energy because how you touch that person energetically before they go on affects millions of dollars in production. Do not fuck this up. Like that was how I was trained as a 22 year old. It was like, you are the one. Like you affect how they do everything today. You're their last point of contact physically and spiritually before they go on. Like you're the day maker. Someone hashtag day maker. <laughs> like that is some of our responsibilities on this planet. We are conscious beings that are practically aliens. We're practically not even human. We're here to be day makers for people. We're here to change things. We're here to shift things. It's our assignment. And sometimes it looks like being paid to be a makeup artist, but it's very much something else. So I was bringing my something else for, for Kiara that day. And I was dedicated to being her something else. That was my, my commitment to her.
for this conference. And she walked up to me and she was like, did you get my message? And I was like, no, I didn't look at my Instagram this morning. And she was like, I got this download in the middle of the night that you're supposed to MC this day. Like you're supposed to be the one to introduce people onto the stage. Would you do it? And every Oprah cell in my body lit up in that moment. And I was like, I am dedicated and I set the intention to have the fucking time of my life discovering my personal path to bigger than Oprah. Yes, I'm in. <laughs> what do you want me to do? And there were a million fears on the way. I, I went to town telling my mastermind, I'm like, um, people inside of Legendary, it's my current program for energetics, about like, the things I had to mentor myself through on the way to that moment. Massive self-doubt. All these weird thoughts coming up. But the intention was there. And my intentions are pure. And then, voila! The universe is like, want to MC? And then instantly I had another question come through of like, do you really trust other women enough to edify them and boost their platform? Are you strong enough? Are you a big enough woman to do that for other women? And every Oprah cell in my body was like, fuck yes, give me the microphone. Cause I think about who is Oprah and what did she do? She interviewed, she held space. She asked the right questions. She introduced people to an audience. That was her whole thing for like over a decade. And I felt this internal question like, are you, are you big enough to do that? And I was like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. And it's interesting to lean back and witness that. Because for you, there is something that I would call evidentiary icon. If you're a speller out here, <laughs> if you're a speller out here, and welcome, I'm seeing all kinds of cool new names that I never saw before. Hi. Okay. If you're a speller, you can write evidentiary icon. I think I could spell it out for you, former Spelling Bee champ, E-V-I-D-E-N-C-I-A-R-Y, evidentiary, I think. It might be a T, but not a C. There you go. Evidentiary icon. Each of you, it is my firm belief, each of you came onto this planet with an energetic signature. This is the baseline. Oh my God. Oh my God. My <laughs> comments just started working on this phone. We're like 900 comments in, maybe 400, but they just started kicking in for me. That's amazing. Yeah, we're 300 comments in and they just kicked in. Okay. So each of you, it is my firm belief. It is my firm conviction that each of you came to this earth plane with a unique, iconic, a signature. It's an energetic signature. It's your identity. It's unique. I have this weird superpower of being able to just sit in someone's energy and witness them and I can figure out what theirs is. And it has something to do with looks. It does. It has something to do with, to do with looks, but it's also like an energetic field. It's, if you are, if you are of the Christian persuasion, it's like the mantle a person carries. If that word lands better with branding for you, you know, because every, I'm like burning up now. Hang on. Let me get this thing off. Sorry. Ugh, too hot. It's like, like a mantle, another word for this, another branded word for this, because I'm going to be talking about branding like crazy tomorrow as well. But like, we had to do the energy work first. If you, if you brand things Christian, you could call it your anointing. You could call it your mantle. 
You could call it your calling, your purpose. If you're more on like the metaphysical side of the plane, it's like it's your energetics, it's your emotional authority, it is your unique frequency. Like there's so many different ways that you could brand this. But I can sit with someone and feel them and witness them and I can notice that they are like the culmination of, of other iconic signatures. Yeah, auric field, exactly. So for example, my friend Nicole Amber Eaton was on stage and I witnessed her the day before dancing. I know her pretty well. I've, I've gotten some YouTube coaching from her. She's phenomenal. She's a conscious parent. We were in mastermind together as peers. Like, I just, I know her heart. And when I looked at her, I was like, okay, like evidentiary icons, like there are other people that have a, a signature like hers and a look like hers. Like the way that they present their energetic frequency into the, the space around them. You can find evidence of your iconic signature in other people who are already stepping in, in their power. So when I look at Nicole, although she has her own unique frequency, her evidentiary icons are like literally, you watch her dance, and especially because she was wearing like bell bottoms the first day, I literally felt Prince channeling through. Like purple rain vibes, like Prince was coming through strong that day. I was like, that's amazing. So she's got, she actually has like some of Prince. And then also when you like witness her face, she, her smile, if you know her, tell me if this is real. Like her smile, she was gifted with like an ear to ear Julia Roberts smile. So like her iconic signature is as if like Prince and like Julia Roberts met up and like had a, an energetic love child with also like the consciousness, soul, depth, rock star, like groundedness vibes of like Lenny Kravitz. And you mix them all together and I forgot to add this, but she also has like like a pinch of um, Lisa Bonet thrown in there, like soul vibes. She's got a pinch of Lisa Bonet, and then also like the energetic signature of the voice of Malika from the Kardashians. That's like her recipe, but there's only one of her. And the thing about a personal brand is that you have one of these. Like you have come here with this unique blueprint of a human being. And this is why yesterday I was just like, like don't, caught, don't, don't be caught up in just like doing one thing. Don't be caught up in like, oh, I'm an emotional energetics coach and that's all. Like, I'm not just an intimacy coach. I'm not just a branding coach. I'm not just a whatever coach. It's like, don't put yourself in a box. You're like your unique signature. It's, you can find evidence of it in other people who are living in their signature, but you are like many in one. Like, don't limit yourself. Your personal brand is dependent on you tapping in and playing full out in your unique design. Oh my gosh, I love that, Monique. She says it's 11-11 here. Like, don't box yourself in. Don't let anyone put you in a box. It takes pinches and splashes of many other pieces of evidence to just pull in one description of Nicole. She shouldn't try to be one thing. She's a YouTube coach. She's a conscious parent. She's a mother. She's a lover. She's a friend. She understands branding. She can dance like Prince. <laughs> like She has all the pieces and you do too. And that thing in the way is what I was talking about yesterday. It's that feeling of like, oh my God, like I can feel my potency and my power. 
I can outpicture the calling on my life. I can see the things that my desire is leading me to my destiny and my design. I can see it because when I write down rumors about myself, I know that if these didn't come true, it would hurt. I know I'm made for more and I know I've got what it takes. I can feel the potency and where people stop is they go like, I, I'm scared. What if I'm not the one? What if I get out there and I have what you had your first five years, Xtina, (laughs) where you're like, yeah, I just was experimenting and and working 60 hours a week, 40 hours a week. (laughs) Right? And I get nothing. And I take the big risk and I make nothing. What's the difference between the two? What's the difference between I take the risk and I make nothing And I take the risk and I get everything. What's the difference? And I'm going to say something that I have never said ever before. And that is, you've got to step into the icon. You're the brand. The brand is you. There's something called the third axis of energetics. This is another Melanieism. Okay, I learned this from my mentor. There's something called the third axis of energetics, and it is what people feel, the frequency they feel across the screen from you. It's your power. A million pieces of copywriting that are meh won't move the needle. 365 days of Facebook lives where people cannot feel your power will only make you tired. Power will leave you. It will not magnetize to you. If you are not deeply in the icon. You each have this. It's in there. You were born with it. But a lot of what people teach in branding and a lot of the things that like if you're in locked and loaded or like my my classes, like, yes, I can teach you how to copyright. I can teach you how to to launch a course. I can give you a launch sequence. I can give you all the things. But like if people can. Feel your energetic signature through the screen. Like, I can't make any promises. Can't. So evidentiary icons. There are people who are in their power already. I got to watch a stage full of them. And I'm so honored to call them my peers and my friends. I'm so honored that I got to be part of it. And we can see this in celebrities and we can see this in actors, and we can see this in authors, and we can see this in our favorite speakers, and we can even see it in fictional characters. There are already those, oh, we're back. The energy was too big. (laughs) I used to think it was cheesy when people would be like, our energy broke the internet, but literally there's absolutely no reason why that should have just happened. So my phone just went black. And then Facebook closed. Isn't that interesting? But we're back. Um, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> At least it's still in the group. That's good. Okay, so we're back. <laughs> we're back, we're back, we're back. Hi. <laughs> oh, it could be like four seconds for people to hop back in. 
our energetic potency, our frequency was just like, hey, <laughs> Facebook, we crush you. <laughs> okay. So I want to say there's people. And if you're live, if you could type evidentiary icons, evidentiary icons, evidentiary icons, evidentiary icons, there are people who already hold pieces of your energetic signature, your anointing, your mantle, your talent, your gifting, your calling, and they're walking in it full out. And part of my work in Q4 is going to be helping people find the evidence. Because for each one of you, and I did an icon read for everyone who was on stage this past weekend, right? I did like a, just like a quick one. And every, it was so sweet. Everyone in the room was like, do another read. <laughs> like They're so fun for me. Because sometimes I have to sit with it for a minute. But like, you know, being in someone's energy, I can just be like, yes, you're this, 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 and this. All mashed in one. Like you are... That's your frequency. And it can be so fun because it's people that like maybe intuitively like you look up to and you're just like, yes, I'm partly that. Yes. And then it propels you to be like, ah, like if they are it and I am that too, like what's the next move? Do you know what I'm saying? So for me to say what I said about my friend Nicole and like, and pick out like all the different pieces that she is, she's like, oh yes, like channel in some more purple rain, like channel in prints. Like, yes, I have the smile of Julia Roberts and I have the energetic signature of this. And someone on Kardashians who's uber famous also has my voice. You know what I'm saying? Like there's evidence out there that people like me can go really big. They're doing it. They're in their power. They're living affluent lives that feel good. They're self-made. Evidence. Evidentiary icons. But there's work. Inner work. Spiritual work. Practical work of stepping into that side of you. I just did a version of this work leading up to my private retreat in September. So I had clients who they're in the work of curating and becoming the personal brand, but you do want to talk some strategy on that tomorrow. I really do. But today I wanted to lay the baseline, like the emotions of it, right? So leading up to our live event, I had three weeks of like intense pre-work. And if you're a part of it and this affected you, feel free to say something in the comments. So I had about 16 women in like a pre-work pod and this was the work. I was getting to know them and feel their energetic currency and their signature. And I was finding for, for them their evidentiary icons. And I was showing them, okay, like for, for the potency of you to come forward with your personal brand, for people to actually feel the third axis of energetics and feel your power come through the camera. Because so much of branding is imagery and people think branding is like, oh, it's your color, it's your font, it's, <laughs> it's your whatever. It, it's, it's, it's just the picture, like no. It's not a logo, it's your energetics. And so many women are like playing small because they're like, I don't know. So the work leading up to this retreat, as much as possible as I would, I would go through and I would feel the person's energetics and I would go like, this is what I see for you. Here's the evidence of who's already playing full out in your category, in your currency, in your energetic frequency. Here's who's already doing the big thing. And also, you have that. You are also that thing. So let's lean into what do you feel when you look at like their imagery? Because if you, if you hold those codes and you have that energetic currency and you look at your evidentiary icons, the ones who are already like a version, a part of who you are, but they're already out there living embodied, okay? 
when we look at their shoots, what do you feel? What do you want your clients and followership and audience to feel when they witness you on the other side of the camera? If you know that there's a such thing as the third axis of energetics that literally fucking pops off the camera, it's a thing people feel. It's a frequency that they feel when they witness your pictures, when they hear your voice, when they land on your video. There is a third axis. It's beyond who you are. It's beyond what you do. It's the feeling. We've got to get that to convey and come across. But when you're stuck in like, oh, like, I don't really know if I could make it. Like, I might just be one of those people that has big dreams and they never happen. If you're not focused on evidentiary icons, your, your signature coming to life, it's very possible that you could do 365 days of life and no one could ever feel your power. It's very possible that you could sell every day for a year and no one could buy because people cannot feel your love. They can't feel your potency, your femininity, your rawness, your love, your genuineness, your loyalty, your power, your tenacity, your transparency. They can't feel it. A deep piece of my work in this world is a combination of everything that I've done up to this point. It's a combination of someone who's built multiple seven figure brands, but also done energetic management and styling for huge names. Cause it's all the pieces. That's what makes the brand. When you've got the iconography behind the scenes, and you're tapped into who you are and allowing her to come forward, you can sell anything. You can sell whatever the fuck you want. One day you can sell a retreat. The next day you can sell vitamins. The next day you can talk about fashion. The next day you're like, I'm having, you know, I'm teaching copywriting. Like you can sell anything. It comes from the alignment of you as a brand. Who are you? Are you letting the fullness of you, your potency shine through? And it's so challenging to tell someone that. There are many sides of you that want to come out to play. And there's practical pieces that happen. So there are some of you who are already in brand me for Q4 and this is the fucking work. Yes. In the mastermind, I will talk with you about your offers and we will figure out the copy for it and we can talk about your launch sequence and all of the shit. <laughs> like, it's not shit. Like, I'm a genius at this stuff. It flows out of me like water. But your potency comes first. Your unique energetic signature being felt, that's the brand first. You got that? You can fucking sell anything. So tomorrow I'm going to talk a little bit about the strategy, like the what, the why, and the how of a personal brand, because there are like actual line steps that you have to take, but the energetics are the baseline. The energetics are number one. The energetics are going to be the things that hold you through having a sustainable brand. The energetics are, you are this way behind the scenes. It comes alive on camera. People can feel it. And also, this is genuinely fucking you. But a lot of people are playing a little bit small right now. And they're like, I don't know what would happen if I really unleash how sexy I really am. Or how powerful I really am. Or how angry I sometimes am. What happens if I really show who I am? What happens if I really embody everything? Who will be mad? Where will I be shunned? 
And so they play small. But I'm like, be, playing small, that's why you're not getting the money. I talk about the fact that I am here for women getting paid every hour of the day, every day of the year, no matter where you're at. I am here for women getting paid. But I have to break it to you for real, for real. Like if you do not have this piece in place, it's the emotions, it's the embodiment, it's the energetics, it's the playing full out and being all of you every day. Like this is what's in the way of you getting paid. You could not have told me that three years ago. I would have been like, no, but there's a formula. If you just go live, if you just go live, can't you just go fucking hit the live button? Like that's, that's where I was at when I started coaching. 2019, I was just so mad that my clients wouldn't fucking go live. I'd be like, if you just fucking go live. And now in hindsight, I'm just like, thank God some of them didn't go live because like their personal power was at an all time low. And eh. <laughs> Might not have been so hot. Pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. Your inner icon is something you choose to step into. It's, it's literally a mantle you step into. It's something you receive and accept. We, we are in the era of choice. There's a choice here. You get to pick whether to ever activate this or not but I guarantee you it's there for you so here's the other piece here's the thing you could go back and watch this whole training and dissect it and be like well she said I go find other people that look like me and sound like me and have my voice and kind of look like me and then I look at their photo shoots and I try to see like what's there and then I like try and decide like well how do I want my clients to feel and I can figure this out on my own and the truth is, you can. What did I tell you earlier? You don't need a mentor to be successful. But, Jen's got it. Pass the mantle. I had, I had a, a mentor that used to lay hands on people. And I heard her say a lot of things to a lot of people over the years. And one time, she put her hands on me and said, like, every gift that I have, give it to my sister. And I was like, <gasps> like, I just spit <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> As a mantle, that's what you get with a mentor. They pass a mantle to you. On the frequency plane, on the spiritual plane, on the energetic plane, like, they're literally, yes, you could go, you can watch and reverse engineer and try and figure it out. And I've had many clients over the years be like, you know, I just, I tried to watch your shit and figure it out. And now that I'm inside, I'm like, I could have never figured this out. This is part of my mantle. So here's the vibe. I'm going to throw it out here for those of you who are in my world or not in my world yet. And this is the first time you're hearing about this. There is something called brand me and it is, it's coming for you the, the 3rd of October whatever Monday is. Okay. So it's called brand me. If you're in brand me already say I'm in brand me so that I can, I can find my people. <laughs> okay. Brand me is a very unique space. It is a cue for mastermind. It gives access Monday, Wednesday, Friday to me as a mentor in a group of already some people that have said yes in pre-sale and pre-launch when there's very limited details on what this is. You're so welcome to check in my stories and see like exactly what's in there. But the vibe of brand me is walking with women to step into their iconic signature. It's going to be a lot of close proximity access where I'm going to be doing icon reads. I'm going to be helping you see the evidence of who's already got a similar energetic signature, who's playing full out. I'm going to show you pieces and, and, and speckles of what's in your recipe and helping you see how to step into that. We're going to look into your unique personal brand and how you want people to feel when they witness you. And then you're going to have an assignment. 
we're going to do the deep emotional work to bring out your inner icons, plural. And you're going to go have a branded photo shoot. I don't mind who you shoot with. I have some favorite, favorite people that I think are amazing. But one of your assignments in Q4, because we're going to revolutionize your whole fucking brand or maybe even start it from scratch. But you're going to have an assignment to go have a photo shoot. And as a celebrity stylist, I'm going to help you get ready for your shoot. This is everything from the poses, the backgrounds, the color palettes, the makeup piece, outfits. It's everything. We're going to map out every piece that we could do for your unique branding. And here's where, in my opinion, there's a, a hiccup. You ready for the uh, hiccup? People go do branding photo shoots every day. They spend tens of thousands of dollars on a photo shoot and then they don't know what to do with the shoot. Yeah. So my videographer and my photographer, they're like, Xtina, here's the thing about you. Like we do branding shoots all the time for people and we give people their images back and they go and like dump them into the online space. And it's like, oh wow, I had a photo shoot. And then you get your images and you stretch them over a few months and you make multiple six figures with the same shoot. Why do you not teach people this? So Tiffany just did this with me and she said the three weeks of pre-work was necessary for her going into her shoot. It was three weeks of pre-work. I've supported Orlan before a shoot and she's like, why is there not like a document to tell people what the fuck to do and get ready for a shoot? Like you need Spanx, you need this, you need that. What about this? I'm like, yes, it's a whole situation. It's intuitive for me because I did it for years, right? There's emotional pre-work, there's physical pre-work, there's the design of the shoot, there's you being empowered in your beauty. So this is the next piece that's included, like it's so important to me. Within Brand Me, not only is there the mastermind and the work ahead of time and all the components for you actually launching an embodied brand because you have to be embodied, you're the fucking brand. But on top of this, I have a very strong opinion about women outsourcing their beauty. I'm very fucking opinionated about women outsourcing their beauty because I know a lot of women in the online space who are extremely powerful. And a few times a year, they hire a makeup artist to make them look a certain way and then go do a shoot. And I'm like, if you really like that, that's cool. But also, you are outsourcing your power. Because the thing about a makeup artist is, like, you don't know if they have read your iconic signature. You don't know if they're invested in you portraying that. You don't know if they understand the third axis of energetics. They might make you look like something that is not your signature at all and be like, here's the bill. Hope you like that. Oh, you didn't like that? Eyelash is too big. Oh, you don't like a red lip. That's weird. Just wear it. And so now you have outsourced your power distributed power, distributed cash for something that does not translate to who you really are. So yes, as a former celebrity makeup artist, I do believe that there's a time and a place for letting someone take care of you. Yep, there's a time and a place for that, hiring it out. But there's also a resourcing and a being self-resourced. And this is one of the reasons that I am teaching women still to this day how to own their own beauty, how to see beauty as an energetic currency, as a self-sourced ritual, as something that grounds and lands you in your nervous system and also lets the inner icon express. Being walking, living, breathing works of art that are self-made. Somebody who is here, hashtag self-made. I'm here for the self-made woman. 
self-made, self-resourced, high levels of personal power as part of your iconography. I would much rather, over the course of three months, teach you how to be self-made, teach you how do you want to look, how do you want people to feel, how do you want to feel, what's the energetic signature here, how do we call that forward, how do other people feel that, how do you do it again and again and again and again. The Madonnas of the world reinvent all the time. They have teams, but I bet a lot of it is self-sourced. I want you to be able to tap into your intuition and be like, where are we going next? What's the season about? What are we called to? Is this minimalist beauty? Is this maximalist vibes? What are we called to this season? Great, let's express that. Let people feel it across the camera. That's what brand me is about. So not only is it the pre-work and the actual designing and you being self-made, but on the other side of it, it's what to do once you get your images. Because I've had many a photo shoot that I hated the pictures. Anybody been there? If you can be so vulnerable, wave at me in the comments. Have you ever had a photo shoot and you hated the pictures? You're like, fuck, none of these look like me. Okay, this was a piece of me. I'm self-taught in creating branding after the fact from pictures I didn't really like, but I paid for the damn photo shoot. I'm like, and we're using these. <laughs> there has to be one I like. <laughs> so part of brand me, here are the components. Three days a week in mastermind. We can talk about all of these things. Okay, number one. Number two, frequency of beauty. This is a 30 day full beauty immersion. You get luxury makeup shipped to you as part of the experience. And I'm gonna walk you through beauty rituals as a grown ass woman. from a trauma-informed perspective. Beauty as a luxury, beauty as a frequency, beauty as a ritual, beauty as self-expression. Not beauty to fit a mold or make anyone else happy but you. It's all about you. That's the game we're playing, okay? So frequency of beauty, a mastermind, frequency of beauty. Also included is something called photo op. Photo up is the actual trainings on how to get ready for your photo shoot. It's a lot of, it's a lot of embodiment work. The embodiment work is going to happen in courses like drops like this, and you're going to have activations to do to get you ready to actually shoot. Then there's the after work, which is money shots. When you get your pictures back and we've already kind of done pre-work for this already, there's already been a module dropped in there. Money shots is taking a, a branded image from a photo shoot, a raw file, and turning it into a piece of branded content that calls in cash. Already, I have clients who are in money shots because it opened early, it's pre-work, and they're like, this alone was worth the whole fucking thing. Like, this right here was worth the whole thing. We're one, we're one content drop in. <laughs> we're one content drop in for like, a three month experience and people are like, I already got my money's worth. Like I already got it. We're good. We're good. More please. But like that was enough. Okay. It's, it's my six figure way of being. I get the pictures back. This is what I do. And I'm showing people what to do once you get your pictures. So brand me is available to, uh, is available right now. It's been in pre-sale for a hot minute. Today, it's $7,777. If you reverse engineer everything that's inside of it, it's worth 13 k Overnight, the price is going to go up to 8888 So if it's pulling your little chain and you're a sacral buyer and you're like, fuck yeah, get me in, it's going to go up by $1,000. Okay, over the weekend, it's going to escalate to 12 k So by Monday... It's going to be at 12K because that's the actual value of it. But right now it's available. It's your icon reads. It's frequency of beauty, which I've got to pop out off of here because we have an intro call for that like today. Okay. So 
Mastermind for Q4, Frequency of Beauty, Photo Op, Money Shots, Your Icon Read, and I think there's five, maybe five more spots left for this. I'm also going through people's um, social media and doing like a case study with them. So like you get to be one of my case studies. So all of that, it's 7777 right now. Um, I think I'm gonna cap how many people are gonna be in there. I think I wanna cap it at like probably 15 just to keep it intimate. Um, so my team can kind of tell me how many spots are left for that. But it's 7,777 today. It'll be 8888 tomorrow. There's a lot more other ways to be in my world that don't cost that much. But for the person that just knows it, they're like, yeah, fuck yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's available for you. So Raven said, I could cry. Thank you so much. Yeah. So Raven's already in brand me. Yes, girl. Welcome. I'm so happy. All right. I'm going to jump. I've got Frequency of Beauty. So if you join brand me today, you'll see me inside of Frequency of Beauty today as well. I'll be so happy to congratulate you in there. Um, we'll be live again tomorrow. I want to talk some strategy about the what, why, and the how of a personal brand. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So we still got more. Sunday, I'm going to have a shop with me where I'll talk through a bunch of different ways to come and play in my world for the person who's like, you're my person. I just don't know what I want. So that's going to be Sunday. Um, but yep, yeah, I'll have my team put the link. Monique, oh my God, that would be so fun if you join. All right, I'm going to go. I've got two more live things to do today. I love you guys so much. I hope this landed. I hope you see energetics in a very different way. I hope you see branding in a whole different way. It's not your font. It's not your colors. It's not your fucking logo. It's you. But we need you playing full force. Come play and brand me. Okay, bye.